Hello, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over the last category of ratios, the market value ratios. In the previous videos, we look at the first four categories of ratios. And by now, you have assembled a very rich set of data and information about the firm. So in to get, together, we, uh, we have looked at the short-term solvency of the company, is leverage, efficiency, and profitability. So the first four categories of ratios really help us understand um, the firm's performance. So they allow you to evaluate what are the strengths and weaknesses of a particular company based on its financial data. However, there's an important difference between a good company and a good investment. You can have a company that is a terrific company, but it may not be a good investment because all the other investors already know that this is a good company and therefore they have driven up the price of the stock. So you could be paying a very high price for a very good company and therefore your return on your investment may not be very high. On the other hand, uh, a lot of times if you are a value investor, you may actually specifically seek out companies that have recently underperformed, but maybe on the verge of coming back and your stock price is currently very, very low. Those companies may not have terrific performance, but they could be an excellent investment. So that's an important distinction between evaluating a company as a, uh, based on its performance versus evaluating a company based on its investment potential. So this last category of ratios, market value ratios, tells us whether or not a company is a good investment potential. The first of these uh, ratios is a price earnings ratio. But before you dive into that, notice that all these ratios uh, for market value ratios, the first two, all the values are stated on a per share basis. And that's because as an investor, you're seldom buying the entire firm. You're more likely to be buying just a sh uh, ten, 100 shares or a 1,000 shares of a company, but not the entire company. So we need to convert those values into a per share basis. Uh, and the term that um, investors use sometimes are not the same as the term that is used in accounting. Uh, for example, uh, in price earnings ratio, earnings here refers to net income available to common stockholders. And the market to book ratio, the book value here refers to the book value of equity. So uh, you will find in your income, uh, in your balance sheet, uh, the value for common equity. But if you are looking for book value, you will not be able to see that. The term book value here actually refers to the value that is stated on the book, and the book here is the balance sheet. Uh, another thing that I want to point out is the term price. Price here refers to the market stock price. And incidentally, the term market value also refers to the stock price. So this is the market value or the market stock price. So both of them actually means the same thing, but they use a different term. So again, is uh, these are market value ratios. So in a sense, what they are looking at is a market value or the stock price as the numerator, and then a book related value. So either it's net income from the income statement or common equity from the balance sheet in the numer uh, in the numerator and the denominator. So now let's take a look at how do we convert this uh, enterprise, uh, this um, total book value into a, on, into a per share basis. In this example, we have assumed that the market price is $75 per share. So again, here notice that market price also refer to market value or simply the word price. And the number of shares outstanding for this company is 20,000 shares. We're going to convert this into uh, the two values that we need to convert into a, a per share basis is net income. For net income, we're going to convert that into earnings per share. So income and earning means the same thing. So for earnings per share, um, we take net income which is $171,550 divided by 20,000 shares outstanding. 
So our earnings per share is $8.32.75. We do the same thing for book value per share. So I'm going to ask you to do that um, and try it. Pause the video, go to the balance sheet, find the ending book value of common equity and divide that into a per share basis. Did you get $122.82.75? Terrific, congratulations. So now we have um, earnings per share and we have book value per share. And so all we have to do to compute the market value ratio is to divide the market price by these values. So for PE ratio, so PE stands for price earnings ratio. So P stands for price and E stands for earnings. So the price earnings ratio is defined as the price per share. So in our case, that's $75 divided by the earnings per share that we just computed or $8.32.75. And we have a PE ratio of nine times. And you may say, well, what does this number mean? Well, what this number mean, um, again, we have to compare it to the industry average. Um, and as you become an analyst and as you become more familiar with the stock market, uh, some of this number will, will make more sense to you. So in the, uh, based on the general knowledge I have about the stock market, uh, in general, uh, the price to uh, the P-E ratio uh, is about 16. And more recently, the, uh, the P-E ratio has hovered around 20 to 25. So this is very low, nine times. Um, what that means is this, the growth prospect for this company may be very, very low. On the other hand, it may mean that this is a relatively cheap stock. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is the market to book ratio. So we take the market value, which is again is $75, divided by the book value per share. And we have um, 0.6106. That means the market value is only 61% of the book value of this company. This is, as I said, this is very, very low. And if you look at the balance sheet, you may want to take a look and see, well, what is the quality of the balance sheet? And in this particular company, most of the balance sheet items are tangible items. So this may be a very value stock. This stock may be undervalued. It has very low growth, growth prospect, extremely low turnover, so very inefficient. But the market is also undervaluing it. So this is an example of a potentially valuable purchase. So this could be a good investment opportunity of a, of a stock that uh, that is not very glamorous it, uh, for some of its turnover ratio and growth ratio uh, may be very, very low.